Welcome, Peter, to my podcast, Ondernemer in Wonderland, Entrepreneur in Wonderland. <laughs> I'm happy to have you as a, as a guest. Pleasure to be here, Jorin. Real pleasure. Thank you so much. I will uh, I will shortly uh, introduce you to to my audience, um, to our listeners today. Um, a wonderful group of conscious creators and entrepreneurs that are uh, like you and me, committed to to bring uh, joy, happiness, love, uh, expanding consciousness into into the world. And um, uh, yeah, I would love to share with them how I met you and why I invited you for the show. Mm -hmm. um, like in, th in this time of year, we're now in May, and uh, it's six years ago that I first uh, met you at Mandali uh, in right. Italy. Yeah, that's right. I still yeah. remember you standing outside looking at the stars in awe. Do you remember yeah. that? I remember. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you had a you had a shift. You had an experience there already, just in the Mandali experience. I called yeah. the Satori. Yeah, a glimpse, and I remember you were standing there, just overwhelmed. And it was after the evening meditation. I still have a memory of that. And thank you that so was... much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for for reminding uh, that I, I recall you recalling that moment, uh, like the the year after this experience as well. So it keeps re coming back to your uh, memory and to yeah. mine. Yeah. Yeah. Six years ago, wow. Yes, it was right <laughs> after the opening of uh, of Mandali, uh, the retreat center. That's, yeah. right. That's right. So and that was the the, um, the Mandali experience. And that was the first time where I've experienced you as um, uh, one of the facilitators of uh, guiding us through meditations. And um, that was to me already a very heart opening experience. But, but the real shit was... <laughs> Uh, happening after that that experience, um, I think one and a half year uh, later, um, I got back from my pilgrimage uh, and I found it hard to reintegrate uh, back into normal uh, life after I returned from three months uh, walking on foot. So I figured it would be good to go to Mandali and to have like a silent retreat or something. And, and but the only option was the enlightenment intensive. <laughs> But I didn't have a clue where I was going to participate. And I thought, OK, this is about the time, the right time. And it's probably going to be a lot of silence. <laughs> uh, so I'll just book it. And then when I arrived, I was like, what the flying fuck am I getting into? <laughs> <laughs> what have I got myself into? <sighs> yeah. And um, we will talk uh, more about the process uh, during this conversation. Uh, but th this first experience with you as a facilitator of the Enlightenment Intensive was the most profound experience in my life. And it opened up parts of my consciousness. And I know from all of the participants uh, that go beyond uh, imagination. You cannot imagine the, the effect of this process that's true yeah mm -hmm. it's impossible to put into words but, yeah uh, we can try <laughs> yeah we will uh, <laughs> try. so and and this is what i i've got like hooked to to the process of uh uh getting to know myself through enlightenment intensive and, and different paths uh different other um practices but enlightenment intensive that I've experienced under your guidance or under your facilitation, they've made such a profound impact on my life and also on my life as an entrepreneur. And I'm about to go to a, another enlightenment intensive. And this moment, it felt so right to invite you, Peter, to share about your mission, uh, to share about the technique, about why this is such an, um, a beautiful uh, technique uh, for anybody in the world uh, on the path to self-realization, what it means for people, what it means for humanity. Um, and since this is a podcast uh, with an audience uh, consisting of entrepreneurs, I would love to, to have a chat also about how this, how this um, uh, impacts uh, 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 our entrepreneurial journey. Sure. Uh, and so um, I, I already before we 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 started uh, the recording, I said I, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with a really annoying question. <laughs> go go for it. <laughs> Those are my favorites. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
tell me who you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I was to answer that according to Ramana Maharshi's uh, understanding of the question, he said uh, the inquiry of the of the form who am I is the principal means in order to gain happiness. So who am I is an existential, ex existential question that uh, has no answer in words, it has no answer in words. But who am I in the term of like, who am I in the world? <laughs> uh, so my name is Peter Harper. I run a project called The Drunken Monk uh, since 2019. And my task is to serve. And the reason for that is because like you, I became very passionate about the enlightenment intensive process and my own journey with that really started back in the 80s when I did my first enlightenment intensive which is a long time ago now and to cut a long story short it was around 2004 when I went to Italy and I did another one with another teacher and I had a very profound shift in my own personal experience but what was really annoying about that experience was that after three months, it wore off and I was back to old clothes and porridge and moving into stress. And, you know, it just I lost that feeling. So I very determinedly decided that I was going to go and do it again until I could keep it. <laughs> and in short, I spent the next 12 years doing it two, three, even four times a year to really fully understand and to unpack it and to distill all the wisdom from it and why did, why it works, what makes it work. And I was successful in that for my own self. And then what arose from me was the passion to share it. And I've always, to be honest, I always wanted to be a rock star. <laughs> and that was, music was my big passion. And then this came along and somehow hijacked my ambition. And here I am. <laughs> you know, I still have a recording studio where I make recorded meditations and conscious music, and I still love that and honor that part of myself. But especially uh, in the last years, I found it to be immensely fulfilling and sharing this with the world and more with more intensity because I feel it's more needed and it's really something that I'm just flowing along with. I, I couldn't really explain or describe why that why that is it's more just I wake up with it in the morning and it keeps me going all day I just love the what this does what it does to people and to to see people open and to flower through the process is just simply magnificent it's mm -hmm. really heartwarming to meet human beings on that level of consciousness really from the heart with awareness from a space of joy and loving kindness and collaboration where there's no agenda where things are just flowing it's, it's something that is completely special i feel and i see that potential in everybody and it, i guess the key thing is making the intention to awaken and having the commitment to go through the challenges in order to get there and that's that's for me the the path that i'm on and um talk a little bit more about the drunk the drunk monk uh, peter you, you you mentioned yeah the project you started in 2019 so you were already on that path um for quite a long long time and you've been doing intensives for quite a long time mm -hmm. what was at the root of the the drunken monk project well, it was really to, to, to share this process, mm -hmm. to share the Enlightenment Intensive. And in 2019, it was a time it was pre, um, you know, pre COVID. So the world was kind of normal in that sense. And so my primary objective was, was to share the Enlightenment Intensive and to create recorded music that I, I just love to do anyway. And then in uh, 2020, then obviously we were shut down. We couldn't function with in-person groups anymore. So then I found myself online. And that really changed everything for me because suddenly the whole world was brought into my, into my living room directly through my computer screen. And I would never have believed that 
I could teach and serve people through a screen, through a computer screen. It was just, the idea was ridiculous. But then I discovered that not only could I serve, but we could create an atmosphere. There was, people were getting shifts, something was happening. And I also found that this real, uh, you know, this feeling of uh, there's something more important than myself, and that's the well-being of other people. Mm. And I just got really touched by that. And for me, I guess what I saw in myself was a lot, was a, was a lot of selfishness that I'd always been just going through the world, you know, doing my thing and just, you know, da da da. And then when that project changed and it went online the whole intention behind it completely shifted for me personally and then I found myself really working more intimately with people directly over a longer period of time so rather than just doing an intensive and saying okay ciao good luck <laughs> you know I, I learned the importance of sustaining or building a community so we now have a, a thriving community called the drunken tribe uh, which is just such a pleasure to be a part of because everybody's there learning and contributing and growing as a community. And so that kind of elevated the, the project into another dimension that started to become uh, defined by this kind of acceleration in the desire for people to awaken. And everything that follows from that, the developments in science, quantum science particularly, mm -hmm. is very interesting. The entanglement theory, the, the, the power of consciousness, that it's measurable, that it creates change. And it's something that mystics and magicians and, and uh, you know, teachers and masters and gurus have known for thousands of years, but haven't been able to describe in a way that is accessible for modern science. And now we're here at this tipping point where we're moving into a, a new age of understanding and awakening uh, that is measurable, that is uh, being supported by epigenetics, by quantum science, mechanics, and so much else that's going on in the world right now. And all those things have lifted me literally off the ground <laughs> so that it's kind of giving birth to a completely new understanding and the way that I describe the narrative that I use in the meditations every time I do an intensive is at another level mm -hmm. there's something else that's opened up that's, that wasn't available there before that becomes available now and more and more people are starting to move into that flow and if they're not moving into the flow they're looking to do so and when people have that intention to awaken and the commitment to walk the path, then they'll find themselves listening to this, for example, mm -hmm. the podcast, or like you, like your journey, just you step into the flow and then suddenly you're carried into another world. Things that are no longer serving you, the old energy, the anxiety, the stress, the trying to do things through time and space, the old way starts to fade. It doesn't work anymore. And then we start to move into, by quantum, I mean like a shift where you move into a dimension or a space of being absolutely present. And there's a relaxation and a stillness and a peacefulness. And then you just follow the energy and things come to you. There's less effort. There's no stress anymore. Fear disappears. This is probably the most beautiful thing that people report to me is I don't feel afraid anymore. And when that happens, the acidic environment of stress, fear, anxiety, isolation, is replaced by one of loving gratitude. It's more alkaline. In that environment, your garden can blossom. So you're literally moving into a more fulfilling space. Your nature, you return to nature, connecting to your natural essence before you, we have all these layers of conditioning. The self-limiting beliefs start to dissolve. And it's a process and we just walk that path. But the more deeply you connect to your essential self, the more deeply you can rest in the present moment without any resistance, with being con connected to the heart in a place of coherence where there's a collaboration between body, heart, and mind. Let's call that coherence. Then the magic starts to unfold. Things start to change. Mm -hmm. You start to move into a flow. You're your purpose becomes more clear. 
things happen that are more, it's more, you're supported, things flow more easily. And it just, it just happens by itself. So there's not any need to, to force or to have an agenda even to try and push things. I mean, you can still make plans by, by not having an agenda. I mean, an efforting tense agenda that I have to, you know, you move into a flow where things, if something's not working, you go in another direction. You just play with it. It becomes more light, playful. And the intensive teaches coherence. It doesn't solve your challenges. It won't pay your bills. It won't make you rich or fix your relationship, but it'll teach you coherence. Mm -hmm. And what that means is simply balance and harmony, moving into your nature, connecting to that space within you that is coherent. The present moment is a doorway to that. And when you move into the present moment, you start to become more aware of the flow of your breath. When the breath moves into a relaxed rhythm, there's a, a collaboration. The heart starts to say, oh, uh, I'm not under any threat. This is quite nice. I'm feeling relaxed. And then the heart brain, because there's actually 40,000 neurons in your brain, in your heart, that are communicating with your brain more than your brain does with your heart. This is amazing stuff. But your heart starts to relax. You're breathing, your body is soft, your heart relaxes, your emotions calm down. And when your emotions calm down, the heart communicates that to the brain, saying, I'm feeling safe. And the brain kind of goes, okay, I'll switch off the survival mind. So stress just disappears. And the brain then says, oh, I'm not under threat, so I can boost the immune system. I can awaken the pineal gland and re release some oxytocin and some DHEA hormones that make you feel good. So there's this natural feeling of joy that arises. And that's coherence. It's been described in science. It's beautiful to see. But that's the, that's the process, connecting to the body, the breath, the senses, listening. Breathing becomes soft, body becomes harmonious, relaxed. The heart starts to dance with the mind saying, hey, this is great. We're having a little party down here. How are you doing? And then the brain goes, oh, well, okay, let's, I'm going to join in. And there's this cohesion. And then from there, you create a new baseline. In the drunken tribe, we have this thing of the new, love is the new baseline. You move from that space of love and then things start to open up and flow and you move through the world in a different way. And that's the beauty of the intensive because it's an accelerant that brings you into that space. So you experience that directly. You get a taste of it. And once you have a taste of it, that's it, you know. You know, the cat's out the back, basically. And you just flow with it. You cannot, <laughs> there's no return. <laughs> there's no going back. No. There's no going back. And, and thank, thank you so much for, for um, already pointing out that coherence, the, 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 the cohesion, mind, uh, the heart, the body. And uh, you, you were also talking about fear. People feel less fear. Um, the mind starts to feel safe with that what the heart desires and they start to dance with each other and i've experienced it what it brought me from having a lot of anxiety before anxiety of overwhelm or being too busy or doing stuff that i uh, know that will pay me but they won't bring me joy um what i've been starting to feel more and more and more after each intensive like an like limitless energy Yes. Limitless yes. energy, limitless inspiration. <laughs> like every time I sit down for five minutes, like like downloads, downloads, downloads. And so it's such a wonderful, like once you surrender to that flow, that this is also how the Drunken Monk um, project evolved for you. You didn't figure it out. You, di you didn't uh, plan it uh, out uh, on beforehand that it would turn out to be a tribe, to be a community that is elevating uh, its frequency and, and the, the frequency of the world uh, Absolutely in general. Not. Yeah, no, <laughs> You could I, never I just, 
planned that before no um, and it's still and it's still working that way it's yeah. still like oh my goodness i'm doing this now okay we're doing that now yeah it's, it's uh it really is an adventure and you know i i just i relax into it i relax yeah. into it and you know some there's still challenges you know sometimes we get hit with like you know uh, like everybody else we have to pay bills and then there's inflation and there's all this stuff going on and uh yeah home health work relationships money it's like you know, resources Shopping, carrying it's just, water <laughs> yeah it's like you still get hit with all those those challenges but they keep you sharp and what i find is just that the approach to them changes you know so uh, in a way making friends with them are becoming excited about them but not not in a silly way but just kind of like okay well i can solve this and what i've found is that the more that i embrace the, the, the these opportunities then the more things open up in ways that i thought wow i never thought that was possible and small things like you know what, you, what we would call manifesting you know how to manifest from this space and how that works and and that's another two or three podcasts, but I know. In a, yeah, yeah. But in a nutshell, what I've found is by letting go of trying to manifest something in order to to fill a need. You know, the when then trap that I call it. You know, so that you know, I've got this challenge. I need uh, another. You know, I need a new home, or I I need to you know pay my taxes, and I need so much money by the end of by all that that kind of stuff. For example, it can be anything, and then we kind of move from this space of like, oh shit, you know, I have to get this together, and as I'm moving from that place of panic, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. But what I found does work is like, oh look at this challenge. Well, thank you so much for this beautiful new home that you found me. I know I, I don't see it right now, but I see it in the field. I know it's there, you know, because everything's there, because there is no time in the quantum field, in the unified field, the source of all that is, whatever you want to call that, consciousness, very simply. And just being, touching that feeling of being grateful for, for what, as if it's alive in you right now, as if it's happening right now. And it's all energy. It's all about energy. And things are there to, to about how you're going to feel. It's not about the thing, it's about the feeling. And when you flood yourself with love and gratitude and you connect with that feeling, you get more of what you are. And this is the key. It's not about things. So it, obviously, you know, I'm, it's more complex than that. But as a baseline, manifest more of what you are. Manif what is it? The, what's the feeling, the energy that you want or that you need? And then be grateful for that in this moment and be open to receive it. And even use your imagination, sense, feel, or imagine that right now. And gratitude is the most powerful way to do that. Mm -hmm. And finding gratitude in small things, a cup of tea, taking a breath, relaxing your body, a moment of stillness that creates that new baseline, you elevate your frequency, when you elevate your frequency, you're more in tune with the field. When you're more in tune with the field, you're more open to your purpose, to the quiet voice within to the your heart's desire, whatever, however you sense, feel or imagine that. And then you follow the energy, you get an enthusiasm, like you say, you'll get a download. And it's like, oh, wow, I'm going to follow this. And you follow it and you see where it goes and it becomes playful and light, spontaneous and alive. And then your in life becomes immensely enriched by that. And not only your life, but the life of others. It spreads. Yeah. And that is the greatest gift as an entrepreneur, as a creator, as a human being that you can give the world right now is that vibration of love. So when you connect with that in yourself, Everything else just follows. So I needed to manifest something. It's like, well, I need a parking space. You know, thank you so much for the parking space. And you'll find it. And small things like that will just flow for you. And if you don't, then maybe there's a reason because maybe you need to be somewhere else. But it's like, that's okay. And you just flow with it. You just follow the energy. It's all about energy. Yeah. 
you, you had this you there was one line um you just shared and it was you, you manifest more of what you are yes that's yes. basically it uh, and so, so what does that mean to manifest more of what you are and what does it require to be able to do so this, yeah that's a great question so it's you step into the now you step into the now the first step is be present mm. is be present so you let go of the old energy move away from the past you know Lao Tzu said if you're feeling depressed your focus is on the past If you're feeling anxious, your focus is on the future. If you're feeling calm, your focus is on the present. So I have this thing called the, the map to fulfillment. And the first step is hold the intention to be present. Hold the intention to be present. And make the commitment to awaken to your full potential. And that kind of creates focus because where focus goes energy flows very simply where your focus goes energy will flow and you can demonstrate that for yourself very simply by right now closing your eyes and imagining that you're sucking a lemon instantly your mouth will start watering at least mine is yeah Maybe not for everybody. Maybe if you can't imagine it, you can just you know look at it. But we have this, the, the brain has this capacity to respond immediately directly to, to thoughts. So whatever we imagine, the brain doesn't know if it's real or if it's just an imagination. So that's why also if you're feeling anxious about something, the brain will start to respond with the physiology of releasing stress hormones because it doesn't know that it's just your imagination. So having the intention to awaken with the commitment to fulfill your full potential, intention and focus. The next thing is where is my focus? And guard your mind, guard your thoughts. Yeah. Because they're having a direct impact on your physiology. So it's not to beat yourself up. Oh, I'm having bad thoughts and I'm having a bad day because you know, it's all my fault. And, you know, to, you, you know, you've got to let that go. It's a process. So the attitude of loving kindness, connect with the heart. That's the next step. Be aware of your focus. Center yourself in the part of you that is aware with the intention to be present. Find ways to anchor yourself in the present moment, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Connect with your heart. Self-love. For the Hopopono is probably one of the most powerful tools to use. And I love I'm that sure. because it's like I'm so sorry for all the mistakes I've made. That's awareness. Yeah. Please forgive me. That's compassion. That's the heart. I love you. I love you. The vibration of love. The, the whole field, the, the, the whole field is pure love. Consciousness is pure love. It's a vibration of our nature, instant everything. Thank you, gratitude. The vibration of gratitude. So you have awareness, compassion, love, gratitude. That's why the Hopopono is so powerful, because those are the frequencies that elevate your, your, your whole being into a place of coherence. And you can only enter that by being present. And the more deeply you're present with that, the more power you have, the power of now, as Eckhart would say. And then you start to play. You just follow the energy and life will guide you. It's, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to have an agenda. You don't have to figure things out or push things or try and save the world. Yeah. You just fall into the now follow that energy and you become more of what you are more more compassionate more loving more grateful more alive and the sign that lets you know you're in the right path is a quiet sense of satisfaction for no reason there's this content contentment that you wake up with it in the morning and it's there 
whenever you look, whenever you stop to be still, there's this contentment. Things slow down, not so serious anymore. And there's peace and there's qualities like joy and spontaneity. And also qualities of the heart can be strength, honor, integrity, authenticity. Then you start to flow with that. You become more of what you are. This is this is beautiful. This is this is the most wonderful. Um, you call it, I think you call it a mapping uh, for also for entrepreneurs and for co-creators. If you want to contribute to the world uh, from the heart, if you want to contribute to a, a higher frequency in the world, if you want to contribute to more love in the world through whatever it is that you're bringing into the world with your um, with your creations with your business um, and you follow these four steps and I, I will recap them for the, for the listeners so that they can try and practice uh, uh, practice that for themselves um, um, hold the intention uh, to awaken hold the intention and commit to that process of um, uh, of awakening a focus uh, that was the second step right focus yeah be aware of where you are focused be aware focused. of where you are focused yeah yeah focused. and there's no right or wrong it's not to say it's is wrong to focus on the past or the future it's just be aware of where you're focused what are you feeding right now yeah because where your focus goes the energy is going to flow yeah. yes so and, that, and that's why it's important to be aware of where your focus is and don't judge it but be aware <laughs> Exactly. And then navigate from there. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and loving kindness. Eh? The Hopono Pono. I always find it hard to pronounce it the way it should. But <laughs> the, yeah, the loving kindness practice of, of also uh, forgiveness, for, um, uh, gratitude, um, self-love, anchoring yourself and finding practices that support you in, uh, in this loving kindness towards yourself, towards another, towards uh, the world. And then the fourth, if I if I got you right, is play. Yeah. <laughs> Just play. Or, Just or... yeah, be yourself. Yeah. Be yourself. Live without yeah. fear. And you know, then what you'll find is because there's there's more, there's more to the map, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> that would probably take another another hour. But yeah, play. Be be authentic. Be be yourself. You know, don't sacrifice yeah. your own integrity for the sake of other people's expectations or their values or what they tell you you should be doing you you fall because sometimes it can be hard the path of the heart can be hard you know yeah. it's not no i don't want to be a doctor i'm going to be a, a musician for example you know that can you know go against the, the the expectations of others or you know if you suddenly quit your job and you know we can get hit by people who disagree with our choices so the the the, the solution for that that I find is find your tribe, you know, find at least one person or even more is, is better if you can, but people who support you, who you are, who are there for you without any conditions, who don't have any agenda for you, who would love you no matter what you do, you know, in the same way, the, mother, the love of a mother to a child, you know, I mean, this is the love that the universe has for us, yeah. you know. Is this unconditional love and to find people who understand and appreciate that is the most wonderful thing it's and one the of the th thing. things how, how you you are facilitating this is the drunken uh tribe um uh, where people who have done intensives uh, with you or have done one of your online uh courses or um uh, who participated in one of your programs they can join in this drunken tribe uh that's right. I'm part of the group and I, and it's wonderful to receive your weekly um, inspirations through meditations or uh, reflections. Um, before we 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 close we, 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 I think we, we, there there should be an enlightenment intensive podcast with there can be so many episodes about <laughs> how this this path of self-discovery uh, through the enlightenment itself there's so a, a lot to 
to share and to discover and to explore uh, about in, in this process of the enlightenment intensive. But what I would want um, uh, the people who are listening to this recording right now, um, I would love them uh, to be able to find you. And how can people join you in this in this process? How how can they find you? What what would be the best way to to dive into this process with you, with a drunken monk? Okay. Well, I'm I'm very privileged to work together with uh, Veronica, who's um, the other half of the drunken monk. She you're uh, the drunken one, and she's the monk. <laughs> no, it's the other way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the drunk. She's the monk. <laughs> yeah. So we work together uh, and as a team to to uh, you know serve basically, and uh, she's an amazing with the Instagram. So you'll find us on Instagram, the dot drunken dot monk. There's also the, the drunkenmonk.org, the website. So you'll get links through there. Uh, we're on Spotify, uh, Insight Timer. And uh, basically, if you Google the Drunken Monk, you'll get, you'll get us in a lot of Kung Fu movies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the next Enlightenment Intensive is going to be in November in Mandali Retreat Center in Northern Italy. And we're looking to hopefully hold one in in other places very soon now that uh, things are starting to change and become more open we're we're developing more and more in-person programs and yeah you, you you'll find us uh just through through your favorite search engine i'm sure <laughs> and i will I, I will make sure that they can find i will put uh i'm doing like this i'm pointing uh, below the screen right now but i will put it in the, uh, what they call the show notes i will i will direct uh, people who want to join in 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 an enlightenment intensive or in in either one of your other programs or who want to listen to your wonderful meditations and also beautiful music on uh, on Spotify um, mm-hmm. so that they can find you and um, maybe to to close um... well what I could do is give somebody a a little practice how how to practice. Um, the, the question before you do the intensive you know you don't need to, you don't need to wait you can still dive in yes yeah um, and this is wonderful the question uh, this this is actually what I, what we were starting with uh, tell me who you are which is that's of, right it's the main <laughs> question we we ask another during the the enlightenment intensive but yeah i would love for you you to 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 share a short practice uh yeah if it, you like it's I mean, you can use the question, who am I, which is the oldest question in the world. Uh, but you can also have other questions. Um, but let's, let's stick with the, the original. It is the best. You know, who am I? And basically, it's a beautiful tool to bring you into the present moment. And what you can do is just sit quietly. You can close your eyes or have your eyes open, but stare at something blank, like a wall, or if you wish, a mirror. But for now, let's just stay with the wall. And you take the question in, you just focus on that question, who am I? In the very same way that you were focusing on the lemon. So you trust and you know that your your brain's taking the question with the intention to answer it. Yeah. So take the question in with the intention to know the answer directly. To know the answer directly. And what that means is that you're not going to get an answer delivered in words. It's not a concept. It's not from the mind. It's a direct experience, a direct connection to your authentic self. What does that feel like? Then be open to whatsoever is alive in you as a response to that in this moment. And relax and observe. And if you wish, you can even speak out loud as if you were talking to somebody, because sometimes that can be quite powerful and just crystallizing what you're experiencing in the moment. And it's not to look for big things. You're not focusing on the past, what you did last night or your worries about the future. But if you feel something in the moment, I'm feeling this anxiety about how I'm going to pay my bills this month. And I feel it as a feeling in my belly or my chest. And I can hear sounds. And now I feel the fading emotion as I place more attention on it. My body's starting to relax. 
And I'm starting to see that actually it's unnecessary to be anxious in this moment. Everything's fine. The moment is perfect. So you connect with the reality, the truth of the moment. So drop the stories. Drop the, drop the narrative that's going into your head and just simply connect to the aliveness of this moment and describe that and observe it and just follow the energy, see where it takes you. And it can move, it can move you into a space where you start getting a feeling of like channeling something or it's like this quiet voice or a wisdom, you touch into some insights or an inspiration, you feel this guidance and you feel this kind of quiet talk. So it's not a harsh, anxious, critical, complaining, controlling, criticizing voice of the ego. It's a still, a still voice. It's a gentle voice. So you, you just follow that. And then every, you do that for five minutes, and then you close your eyes and you relax. Yeah. And then you start again. You do another few minutes. Take the question in, who am I? And you feel it, you feel that your body receives it like the earth receives rain. You just absorb it into your heart. Who am I? With the intention to know the answer directly. So it's not, you're not just em emptily saying it, you're, you're actually with an intention. I want to know, who am I? What is the answer? And be open. And then just share, observe whatever you feel experience the content of your experience in this moment and just flow with it. And you can do that anytime, sitting in the bus, standing in the queue. Just take it like a mantra. Who am I? Who am I? With the intention to know the answer directly. Exactly. Who am I without my stories? Yeah. And what you're okay. saying, what is this consciousness, yeah. this awareness? Yeah. So what you're doing is you're having the commitment to awaken. You're holding your focus in the present moment because you have to do that in order to connect with the content of now. And you're describing what you're experiencing now. This is how my body feels. There's an emotion. I hear a sound. There's a silence. Oh, yeah. This is beautiful, Peter. Thank you so much for sharing this, this practice already. And, and this is just a hint of what people will experience during uh, an enlightenment intensive. Um, this, is the, this is the main question that travels with us during an intensive, but also once you've done one, it travels with you all all Forever. along <laughs> forever <laughs> you will always be being uh, uh you will always be experiencing uh um the the, the yeah it, it it this question this is what, always getting back to the question is what what helps people um get back to their authentic self to their purpose in life to their essential self and it also helps them to express like ask, asking that question who am i it helps them to express uh, what is truly uh, going on inside? Exactly. But thank you so much for sharing this this practice. We're we're wrapping up, uh, Peter. I, I I already I I already felt we we could do like a whole podcast series on the enlightenment intensive because yeah. there's so much uh, <laughs> to share. Um, we're just getting started. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm so, I, I feel, so we prepared uh, some questions, but I feel, I feel really grateful that um, you have been sharing from this, this flowing energy, because what you have been sharing is actually the most um, essential uh, tool um, and also knowledge and energy for um, also people who are listening to this, um, to this podcast so that they can directly apply it to whatever it is that they are uh, dealing with in their a business in their life um this is something you can instantly apply uh, you can always fall back uh to turn to if things get challenging or getting back to the root of why we are here what we are here uh to do yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. And thank you so a, much it's been a real pleasure and i hope uh, and, uh, that everybody can 
um, get something from the podcast today. And uh, thank you so much for inviting me. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much, Peter, for joining me. And I will put the, um, the information uh, where people can find you in the show notes. And um, uh, yeah, I hope that people are listening, that they will join uh, in one of your programs because this is what the world needs. Absolutely, yeah. Thank it's been so described much. as life-changing. So I, it's always a, such a tremendous joy for me to, to host this process. I love it immensely. It's, it's my life now, so... Thank you so much. Thank you.